friends welcome to one little coder in this stable diffusion tutorial we're going to see a very important achievement as far as i know in the stable diffusion ecosystem at this point which is that you can run stable diffusion on intel cpu yes let me repeat it again even if you do not have a gpu you can run stable diffusion on intel cpu that means if you have got macintosh if you have got windows laptop if you have got any machine that is intel cpu that is supported that supports open we know then you can run stable diffusion and um, if you ask me the inference time for an image it takes about uh, five minutes i would say but but even if it is going to take five minutes the fact that you can run stable diffusion on a cpu like which is your local machine is completely mind-blowing and amazing and in this video i'm going to show you how you can run stable diffusion on your local computer cpu not gpu first of all we have got an amazing repository open source repository called stable diffusion dot open we know and then you can see the details here that you know you need either linux or windows or macintosh python 3.8 plus a cpu that is compatible with open we know so if you go read more about open we know um then you can see that open we know is um, intel's distribution which uh, helps in facilitating the optimization of deep learning model so basically you know this is i think intel's way of competing with nvidia I don't have much understanding or details about open we know at this point but just remember that we are using a stable diffusion version that uh, that can run on cpus compatible with open we know which means any mac windows machine that you can check compatibility with open we know before we move forward i would like to give a shout out to the developer who is uh, sergey belusov thanks so much sergey belusov for making this amazing repository and then making it open source please give a shout out to the developer this is this is a phenomenal work because i have not thought like a couple of days back that i could run open uh, stable diffusion on my local machine which is a cpu i don't own a gpu so this is this is like beyond imagination and i'm going to show you now how to do that imagine um like remember that first you need python 3.8 plus if you do not have python 3.8 plus make sure that you install python 3.8 plus other than that i think almost like you would use one of these operating systems first go here copy the path so click code copy the path and once you are done with that then go to your terminal i've got a terminal and i'm going to do git clone git clone of the repository git clone github.com slash the path that you copied and once you do that um, you know it's in my case it's throwing me an error because that repository is already there but in your case if you do that it is going to say that uh, inst like you have to it, it is going to download the repository and then it is going to show and it is going to create a repository like this so if you do not have this already it will create a repository like this the first step is git clone next step is enter inside the repository so you enter inside inside the repository and now you can see at this point I am inside this repository which is stable diffusion open we know and once you enter here the next thing that you need to do is you need to do pip3 install r requirements.txt so i want you to install the libraries that are mentioned in the requirements.txt file that is available inside the directory and the way we are going to do that is pip3 install r requirements.txt I'm trying to install it in a quiet mode so that's why i've got q imagine that if you are a person who is always like who always likes to create a virtual environment do this inside a virtual environment don't do this inside your main don't do don't do a general installation that can mess up your installation uh, if you if you are a virtual environment person if you do not mind about it then doesn't matter you can do what exactly i'm doing if you are a virtual environment person then probably you need to make this folder this folder into a virtual environment and then inside that you can do the installation inside virtual environment after you activate your virtual environment that is something that for you to keep in mind that uh, that you just need to install the libraries that's that's the most important thing and uh, once you are done with the installation then then oops then you can see what all things are available you've got a license file license model output requirements.txt readme.md a python file and then data inside which you will have the model related details let me clear it up 
and then what we are going to do now is we are going to run this table diffusion script we just saw for the first time when you run it it is going to download large amount of models from the google drive that the model uh, or the repository owner has kept so the developer if you see has kept this developer has kept the model inside bunch of google drive let me show you the google drive model does models.json so you can see all the model weights are actually inside google drive rather than your hugging face um, model hub like what we saw in the previous uh, videos so here it's going to get downloaded from the google drive so that means it's going to download large amount of files at the start so once that is done like that is going to happen for the first time once that is done the next time it's going to just take time for inference what i say inference it's just image generation what i'm saying is when you give a text prompt it is going to generate image so let me show you how to generate image the first thing is if you are using python 3 then you can use oh, i've got a lot so if you if you have python 3 then you can say you know what um let me okay if you have got python 3 if you're on windows sorry if you're on windows ideally you would type python sometimes if you're on mac if you have not set any alias you have to type python 3 just remember what do you need to type for you to invoke python basically you're trying to run this python script after you do that then you are going to say stable diffusion dot py once you do that you're going to say dash dash prompt and then inside that you're going to say something like a beautiful um, palace with during sunset and then you're going to run it once i run it it is going to run what you would see in this video is i would uh, i would probably fast forward so that you don't have to wait for five minutes but i'm actually waiting for five minutes or we'll see the time for this prompt to run so it is as simple as this python 3 run the script with the prompt with with this you know script parameter argument and then give whatever prompt text you want i'm going to type enter and then you can see that it is going to run it's it's going to start to run once it starts to run you would actually see a very small indication that would say how much time it takes per iteration so let's let's wait for that just says that uh you know bird tokenizer is it's using bird tokenizer instead of ftfy that's fine um i i don't know why ftfy was not installed that's fine so once it starts until now i think it it has not started uh, generating the image but once it starts like yeah exactly like like i said you can see how much time um it takes you you would see here uh, seven seconds per iteration so one iteration is finished and you would see like how much time it takes two iterations are finished total time elapsed and then you would see this until all the iterations are finished and then ultimately we'll have the image stored in the current repository let's wait at this point you can see this is done it took four minutes seven seconds so let's go to our current working directory and then let's try to see what is there so i'm going to do open dot and then it's going to open the folder once it opens a folder i can open this and then we can see for the prompt that we gave which is a beautiful palace during sunset and it is a low resolution image because we have not seen the parameters but you can see a beautiful palace during sunset is this and and i'll be honest this is amazing and um, i don't know what you think because it's a low race or something but the fact that i can run a very great um, buzzing deep learning image generation model that's a dali level model on my local machine is amazing four minutes is the time on my machine i don't exactly know the processor that i've got but i've got 32 gigs of ram so that also could have an impact so let me quickly show you um, what other parameters are available for example if you go here these are the optional arguments that you can pass 
So the one that we passed is the mandatory one, which is for the prompt. But the other ones that you have here are, uh, you know, you can select the output image name. You can select the tokenizer. You can select the guidance scale, the number of inference steps that you want to say. Like, for example, if you want a very high quality image, then you can have you can set a very high value, low quality image like you can do this thing. In fact, you can change the model configuration path. Like if you do not want to use the models that are downloaded um, by um, from, from the author, if you have got a different place to put it, then you can change it. And these are all different uh, arguments that you have got to change so that you can get totally, you know, uh, you can play with the, th these are like stable diffusion arguments and you can play with that. But overall, if you see, this is uh, this is quite amazing. Like we can we can run something else as well. Like I wanted to show you that I've got a prompt here. I can go copy a prompt here. This maybe yeah. Let me copy this prompt and then see what happens. Like this this how this prompt looks. Just um you know it's on a guidance scale of eleven and uh, the dimensions are uh, you know ten close to like HD. You can see. So I, I've copied the prompt. I've come back here. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Python three space table diffusion dot by prompt open quote paste this close it and then run it again. It might take four to five minutes. As you can see, this one took longer than before. This took five minutes, 17 seconds. So let's open the folder and then see how the image looks like and this is what we have got and this is what we saw on the place where we got the image i wouldn't say it is bad i mean it's totally different rendering but uh, you can see the sand dunes looking really really good the desert landscape you have got a you have got a nice i think these are like temple ruins um i would say this is really good um, except the resolution i think everything is good and uh, and honestly speaking, like I said before, this is this is really promising. So let's quickly recap what we have done. So first we saw that this repository exists, table diffusion dot open we know. And we thank the developer for this amazing repository that helps us run stable diffusion on Intel CPUs that support open we know. So which is which is like many latest Intel CPU machines, Linux, Windows, Mac OS. Then we cloned the repository to our local machine and we went inside the folder of this repository and then we did pip install our requirements.txt if you've got by uh, mac do pip3 if you're on windows pip once you're done with that then it's as simple as that then from that repository you do python3 for mac python for anything else stable diffusion.py the prompt and then the actual prompt that you want to give for the first time we know that it is going to download all the models but after that, it's going to take approximately five minutes for every single inference that you're doing with the default setting. But if you're going to change the settings, um, guidance scale and all those things, then it might change. But for default, it's going to take approximately five minutes. And once the image generation is done, it's going to be available inside your folder as output.png. And uh, when you open it, you would be able to see the generated image. I hope this video was helpful to you. Please give a shout out, huge shout out to Sergey Belosov. Thank you so much, Sergey, for making this amazing library. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in the next video.